Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Have you ever wondered how much silver and gold is in the Earth's crust? We're going to find out in this video. So let's explore. Before we get to how much gold and silver are estimated to be in the Earth's crust, let's first take a look at other aspects of other elements in the Earth's crust and some very interesting statistics about the world in which we live physically. And this is an article that we're, take, that we're talking about here from visualcapitalist.com. When we get through with this, we'll look at that infographic, which is pretty eye-opening indeed. If you enjoy content like this, where I talk about gold and silver and the world of science and technology, I also like to talk about the markets and about precious metals in general and all metals, hence the name of the channel. If you enjoy content like this, I hope you will stick around. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel, gently pressing that thumbs up button, and also hitting the notification bell. There's, there's elements in the Earth's crust, and they provide all the basic building blocks for mankind. But even though the crust is the source of everything we find, mine, refine, and build, it really is just scratching the surface of our planet. So these are pretty interesting statistics here that we have the core uh, of the Earth, which is the innermost layer, represents 15% of the planet's volume. The mantle occupies the most space with 84%. Only the remaining 1% is the crust, and it's a thin layer that ranges in depth from approximately uh, 3 to 44 miles. And we're going to look at what these elements uh, make up the 1% uh, in this data from World Atlas that talks about this. And we may open that up here and look at that here after a bit. The crust is a rigid surface containing both the oceans and land masses. Most elements are found in only trace amounts within the Earth's crust, but several are abundant. The Earth's crust comprises about 95% igneous and metamorphic rocks, 4% shale, 0.75% sandstone, and about a quarter of a percent in limestone. Oxygen, silicon, and aluminum and iron account for 88.1% of the mass of the Earth's crust, while another 90 elements make up the remaining 11.9%. So staggering statistics here, and we can see the rankings of the top 10, and we'll see that in the infographic above. But it's amazing that oxygen makes up the most abundant element in the Earth's crust, and it's a gas. 46% of the mass, coming up just short of half the total. It's very reactive and combines with other elements forming oxides. So we know that granite and quartz are oxides of silicon, rust, oxides of iron and limestone, oxide of calcium and carbon. Silicon, yes, indeed, is 90% of the Earth's crust is compo composed of silicate materials, making silicon the second most abundant element of the Earth's crust. Silicon links up with oxygen to form the most common minerals on Earth. Most places, sand primarily consists of silica, makes sense, usually in the form of quartz. Silicone is the essential semiconductor used in manufacturing electronics and computer chips, and there's still a shortage. Then aluminum, the third most common element in the Earth's crust. Amazing, because aluminum used to be more valuable than gold. The Washington Monument is capped with a small pyramid of aluminum, but it's very difficult to get out of the ground at the time until they figured out how to get it more commonly and abundantly. Because of its strong affinity for oxygen, aluminum is rarely found in its elemental state. And we know these different oxides, hydroxide, aluminum, potassium aluminum, and aluminum and their alloys have a variety of uses, uses from kitchen foil to rocket manufacturing. Iron is the fourth. It's the most common element in the Earth's crust is iron, according to a counting for over 5% of the mass of the Earth's crust. Now we're getting into some heavy metal here. Iron is obtained chiefly from the minerals hematite and magnetite. Of all the metals we mine, over 90% is iron. Iron mainly to make steel, an alloy of carbon and iron. 
Iron is also an essential nutrient in the human body. And then calcium makes up about 4.2% of the planet's crust by weight. So despite the Jules Verne's novel, No One Has Made It to the Center of the Earth, the deepest hole ever dug by humanity reached approximately 7.5 miles below the Earth's surface. To compare, the longest, the deepest gold mine, I think, is over two miles. That's about one-third of the way to the Earth's mantle. This incredible depth took about 20 years to reach. Although mankind is constantly making new discoveries and reaching for the stars, there's still a lot to explore about the Earth we stand on. So that brings us to the most abundant elements in the Earth's crust. In this article from worldatlas.com, we can see this talks about the Earth's crust. We can see the 10 most common elements. And, but some of these other elements are very small slivers. And the others are what we're going to be looking at here. Pretty interesting indeed. So there's when we see they go through these, these top 10 elements. But let's see if they show the... Let's get back over here and look at this and take a look at the actual infographic, which is quite impressive indeed. There it is, the top 10 elements we can see. Oxygen, silicon, silicone, aluminum. We've got iron, calcium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, tin, hydrogen. And then the rest of the elements are 0.48%. So the 0.48% of the rest of the elements, still of those, it's amazing what gold and silver have in store of their amount of, of the Earth's crust. Let's take a look at it. While gold, silver, and copper and other base and precious metals are among the most sought-after elements, together they make up less than 0.03% of the Earth's crust. 0.03. That should give you a, a more profound appreciation for gold and silver. Let's look at it. Copper, 0.006%. Wow. Zinc is 0.007%. Nickel is 0.0084%. Wow, pretty amazing. And you, I wish they would have ordered these in the, in the rarity of them because they don't. Because nickel apparently is more abundant than, uh, than copper. Um, gold is 0.000004%. Man, now that is rare in the Earth's crust. Silver is 0.000075%. So obviously almost double that of gold. Um, and actually, really, that's in the crust. So that is less than the mining ratio. It's crazy. Two to one, apparently, according to this information from, um, um, from the, what their source here. Then platinum, much more rare. 0.000005%. Crazy. And palladium, much more rare than that. At these O's, 0000015%. Wow. And, and we haven't even gone into what rhodium is um, and iridium and osmium. <clears throat> much more rare in the crust. That gives you an idea. Let's see if there's any more information about it here. And that we have this list goes down and shows all of these metals and the percentage in the crust. So here we go. So let's take a look at that. We're looking at uh, these metals, the most abundant elements in the Earth's crust, abundance and crust uh, parts per million by source. And we can see there that it goes down dramatically. And this is in, in um, well, I guess not in total order here, but we can see. That we it mostly is in order. That's parts per million. Gold is 0 0.004 parts per million. It's pretty amazing. Silver is 0 0.075 parts per million. <clears throat> so yes, indeed. So I guess that's a different measure and standard. Here is iridium 0 0.001 and rhodium is 0 0.001 is 0 0.001. Rhenium is even more rare, or parts per million, 0 0.0007. Rhenium is. That's interesting. Tellurium and osmium. Wow. That's intriguing indeed. Platinum, 0 0.005. So there you go. What an amazing 
uh, visual graphic here, an infographic, and it gives you a new appreciation for mining, I would say. To be able to find something that's that rare, very difficult, very interesting indeed. So there you have it. Uh, what are your thoughts about the how much silver and gold is in the Earth's crust and these other metals as well? I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.